navigate to Auto Pride Hand Car Wash. Hey, Barbara. See you later. Hey, Grok, are you there? Hello. Yes, I'm here. How can I help today? Can you tell me about Tesla and Elon Musk's master plan part one? Tesla's master plan part one, introduced by Elon Musk, outlined the company's initial goals to build sports cars, use that money to make electric vehicles, and then use those profits to create an affordable mass market electric vehicle, ultimately aiming to accelerate sustainable transport. The plan, detailed in a 2006 blog post titled Secret Tesla Motors Master Plan, included four key steps. Build a high-end sports car, the Roadster, develop an affordable electric sedan, the Model S, produce a mass market electric car, the Model 3, and enable solar power through Solar City, which Tesla later acquired. It was a strategy to start niche, generate revenue, and scale up to make electric vehicles mainstream. Want more details on any specific part? No, no, it's interesting that this was in 2006, and I believe that has been reached. Uh, tell me now about Master Plan Part 2. I think Elon Musk called it uh, in French, Part 2. Uh, which year uh, did it come out, and what, it did in, what did it include? That's right. Master Plan Part 1 laid the groundwork back in 2006. Master Plan Part 2, as Elon Musk called it, yep, in that playful French, came out in July 2016. It expanded Tesla's vision with four big goals. Create stunning solar roofs with integrated battery storage to push sustainable energy further. Grow the electric vehicle lineup to include compact SUVs like the Model Y and heavy-duty trucks like the Semi. Advanced self-driving tech to make fully autonomous vehicles 10 times safer than human-driven ones, and enable a shared economy where Tesla owners could earn money by letting their autonomous cars act as robo-taxis. It was all about scaling sustainability and autonomy. Want to dig into any of those points? Well, let's recap. So this was released in 2016. We're in 2025 now. And I believe uh, some of the goals have been achieved, but some are in progress, let's say. Break it down for me. Which one have been achieved and which ones are in progress? Right. So Master Plan Part 2 was released in 2016, and we're now in 2025. Some goals have been achieved, while others are still in progress. Let's break it down. Achieved. Solar roofs with integrated battery storage. Tesla's solar roof and power wall combo is out there, letting homes generate and store solar energy. It's not everywhere yet, but it's a functional product. Expanding the electric vehicle lineup, Tesla nailed this with the Model Y compact SUV and the Cybertruck. The Model 3 and Model Y are high volume sellers and the Cybertruck's out, even if it's niche for now. In progress, self-driving capability 10 times safer than manual. Tesla's full self-driving tech is advancing with autopilot updates, but it's not fully autonomous yet. And the 10 times safer goal is still a ways off. Recent recalls and ongoing developments show it's a work in progress. Cars earning money via sharing. The robo-taxi vision, where owners' cars generate income autonomously, hasn't kicked in yet. Tesla's been teasing the cybercab, but a full shared fleet isn't operational yet. So, they've ticked off the vehicle expansion and solar storage, but autonomy and car sharing are still on the horizon. Anything specific you want to dive into? Well, let's continue on this idea. Uh, we know that Tesla Robotaxi was released in Austin with a supervisor not behind the driver's seat, but in the passenger seat. Uh, an additional Robotaxi service was also launched in the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, where California requires a supervisor to be behind the steering wheel. But as we've seen in numerous videos, including some that I've made, 
uh, the supervisor is not touching the steering wheel, not touching the brakes, and not touching the accelerator. So we can see that we're very close to autonomy, and uh, Tesla has uh, invested a lot in uh, NVIDIA GPUs and uh, data centers to train the FSD AI model so we can achieve that autonomy. Uh, can you give me some details on uh, these data centers? How many NVIDIA GPUs um, is Tesla using? Uh, how much was invested in billions of dollars? And according to Elon Musk, we should, we should reach uh, unsupervised FSD, at least in California and Texas, by the end of this year, 2025. Is that right? Tesla's definitely pushing hard on autonomy, and their investment in data centers and NVIDIA GPUs shows that commitment. They've been using tens of thousands of NVIDIA GPUs to train their full self-driving AI with around 50,000 H100 GPUs in their Cortex data center at Giga Texas alone. That number could grow as they expand, and they're also blending in their own AI hardware, like the Dojo supercomputer and AI5 computers, to handle the massive data crunching needed for FSD. As for investment, Elon Musk has said Tesla's spending three to four billion dollars on NVIDIA hardware in 2024, part of a broader $10 billion AI budget. That includes GPUs, internal AI systems, and sensors for their cars. On the unsupervised FSD timeline, Musk did mention plans for unsupervised full self-driving in places like California and Texas by the end of 2025, starting with Austin in June, as you noted, and expanding to places like the Bay Area. The supervisors in those robo-taxi trials, whether in the passenger seat or behind the wheel, aren't intervening much, which shows how close Tesla is to full autonomy. Still, hitting that unsupervised mark by year-end is ambitious, and regulatory hurdles could slow things down, especially in California. Want me to focus on any specific part, like the data centers or FSD timeline? Now, I think the, the regulators, uh, once they see the data and we can see how many lives are being saved, I think it'll be very hard for regulators, uh, you know, to deny Tesla um, to, to release uh, unsupervised full self-driving or supervised full self-driving, because uh, basically it would be the equivalent of uh, not allowing uh, seatbelts. Uh, it would be the equivalent of blocking a technology that saves lives. And I think that will be very unpopular. So regardless of their political motives, I don't think it will work. But let's move on. I want to talk about uh, the fact that Tesla owners will be able to add their cars to the uh, Tesla RoboTaxi fleet starting next year, according to Elon Musk. So, Elon Musk, so in 2026. And I think that makes sense because um, this uh, model of a franchise model for the Tesla RoboTaxi network makes a lot of sense. Tesla and Elon have said that they, they will have about 10 million RoboTaxi vehicles, you know, in the next few years, uh, including the Cybercab, well, they'll make, you know, one to two million per year. Uh, but, but if we really want to have Tesla RoboTaxis in, you know, thousands of cities, and hundreds of countries, uh, then we need a franchise model where Tesla doesn't have to pay for every robo-taxi, but a, uh, an owner uh, actually advances the money, pays for the robo-taxi. Tesla has net 60, so uh, it has 60 days to pay its suppliers. Uh, it can uh, build a vehicle, receive the money from uh, the, the, the buyer, uh, and still make its margin, you know, five to $10,000, depending on the vehicle. Uh, and then the owner of that vehicle uh, is also responsible for maintaining the vehicle, um, charging up the vehicle, uh, cleaning the vehicle, etc., etc. Tesla, I think, will take, um, uh, if you have bought FSD, and these are just numbers that have been thrown around, but, but it sounds uh, pretty good to me, um, you will be able to add your car to the fleet and Tesla will take a percentage out of the revenues. So let's say your car, you know, drives 50,000 miles uh, per year. And uh, just to make it simple, let's say it makes a dollar a mile, right? It'll probably make more than that, but let's say a dollar a mile. So that's $50,000. Actually, let's say $2 a mile, because that's even under what Uber and uh, Lyft do. Uh, and Waymo, of course, because Waymo is very expensive. 
so two dollars a mile let's say fifty thousand miles that's a hundred thousand miles so uh, Tesla would take uh, you know uh, thirty percent if you have FSD and maybe they'll take fifty percent if you have not purchased FFD, FSD but that's still pretty good that still leaves you you know with either seventy thousand or fifty thousand dollars as an owner so people will be incentivized to buy Tesla vehicles and put them in the fleet or even uh, buy a bunch of Tesla vehicles and have a Tesla fleet themselves. What do you think of all this, all these numbers? Do they make sense? Uh, give me some feedback on all this. Oh, you've really thought this through, haven't you? The franchise model for Tesla's robo-taxi network sounds exciting and your numbers line up pretty well with what's been floating around. Let's unpack it. The idea of Tesla owners adding their cars to the robo-taxi fleet starting in 2026, as Musk mentioned, is a game-changer. It shifts the burden of scaling the fleet away from Tesla having to buy and maintain millions of vehicles. Instead, owners front the cost, maintain the cars, and handle charging and cleaning, while Tesla provides the platform and takes a cut of the revenue. That's a lean, scalable model, almost like Airbnb for self-driving cars. Your revenue math makes sense, Let's say a Tesla robo-taxi drives 50,000 miles a year at $2 per mile. That's $100,000 in gross revenue. If Tesla takes 30% for owners with full self-driving or 50% for those without, you're looking at $70,000 or $50,000 per year for the owner after Tesla's cut. That's a solid incentive to join the fleet, especially if you're buying a Model Y or Cybercab, which might cost you forty dollars to $60,000 up front. With Tesla's net 60 terms, they get paid by owners quickly, keep their margins, save five to ten thousand dollars per car, and still have cash to pay suppliers later. It's a tidy setup for them. The numbers hold up based on what analysts like Goldman Sachs and Ark Invest have projected. They estimate Tesla's robo taxi revenue could start at one hundred and fifteen million dollars in twenty twenty seven, with a small fleet and scale massively as more cars join. The ten million vehicle goal in a few years is ambitious, but doable if owners jump in especially with Tesla planning to produce one to two million cybercabs annually. The only hitch might be execution, maintaining and charging thousands of privately owned robo-taxis across cities and countries. Could get messy. Think inconsistent cleaning or charging logistics. Plus, regulatory approval for unsupervised FSD in hundreds of places by 2026 is a tall order, even if the safety data is compelling. You're right though, denying a life-saving tech like autonomous driving could be a tough sell for regulators especially if Tesla's data shows fewer accidents than human drivers. Overall, the model's brilliant, and your numbers are in the ballpark. It incentivizes owners to buy it and could make Tesla's network grow exponentially. The big question is how fast they can get the tech and approvals locked in. What do you think? Any worries about owners keeping up with maintenance or the tech not being ready? Now, while well, we run out of time, I've arrived at the car wash here. Uh, I think uh, Elon Musk said, um, I actually know, he said that uh, it will basically, um, uh, basically uh, this, this uh, uh, plan will be uh, complete by next year. That includes autonomy and users adding their cars to their vehicle. Thank you, Grok. I'll continue talking to you about the other plans later. Bye bye. You're welcome. Safe travels. Hey everyone, my name is Emmanuel Huda and uh, I worked seven years at Tesla here in California and uh, now I make videos about Tesla tech and Tesla full self-driving. I believe full Tesla full self-driving will save lives and I need your help to get the word out. So uh, like this video and follow me or subscribe for more Tesla content. Uh, we can help save lives, you know, one click at a time. Let's go Tesla and stay curious.